Getting to Know More Plants Class 6, Science By the end of this session, students will be able to Identify and differentiate various types of root systems with examples Understand the root modifications Understand the stem modifications And, understand the shoot system We see different types of plants all around us Based on the size, and kind of stem, plants can be divided into herbs, shrubs, trees, creepers, and climbers. Look at the given picture, and label the different parts pointed out. Now, answer, what type of plant is shown here? Tree. Give two more examples of such plants. Banyan tree and neem tree. Name the parts of the plant that absorbs water from the soil. Roots. Name the part that is known as the food factory of the plant. Leaves. The parts that remain under the ground form the root system and the parts above the ground form the shoot system let us now study each part in detail there are two main types of root systems tap root and fibrous root system in the tap root system a single root called the primary root comes out from the seed after germination later smaller roots called lateral roots, branch out from this primary root. Mango Neem Pine Shishim Pea Carrot Radish Turnip and Beetroot are examples of plants with tap roots. Fact file, the roots of the Moringa tree, are rich in fiber, protein, as well as many important vitamins, and minerals. They are therefore used to make Ayurvedic medicines, to treat malnutrition. Moringa is mostly grown in South India. Fibrous roots are those, that grow from the base of the stem, and have a bushy appearance. These roots are thin and almost equal in size. Grass Maize Wheat Onion, sugar cane, and rice are examples of plants with fibrous roots. Functions of roots Anchoring the plant Roots help to anchor the plant firmly into the ground. Absorption of water and nutrients from the soil Roots help plants to absorb water and nutrients from the soil, which are essential for their survival. Preventing Soil Erosion Roots help to bind the soil particles together, thereby preventing them from being carried away by water, or wind. Sometimes roots are modified to perform various other functions such as reproduction and nutrition. Fact File Desert plants have relatively longer roots, because they penetrate deep into the soil, in search of water. Root Modifications Roots of some plants are modified, to perform additional functions. Let us study some of these modifications, and their functions. For storage of food, the roots of some plants such as radish, carrot, turnip, sweet potato, and beetroot, become fleshy. For multiplication, Roots of plants such as, dahlia and, asparagus can develop into new plants. For nutrition, plants such as dodder, have specialized roots, called parasitic roots, arising from their stem, which help them to absorb water, and nutrients from the host. For climbing, some plants have climbing roots, that help the plant to climb up support such as walls, rocks, and trees. 
Examples are money plants, black paper, and beetle. For extra support, roots of plants such as bamboo, sugar cane, and banyan give out extra roots from their branches. These roots grow downwards and give extra support to the stem of the plant. These are called prop roots. Shoot system All parts of a plant that are above the ground form the shoot system. It includes stem, leaf, flower, fruit, etc. Stem The stem is a very important part of the plant. Functions of a stem It holds leaves in position and helps them to spread out as the stem and its branches grow. This ensures that they get enough light for photosynthesis. It bears flowers buds, L, eaves, and fruits. It conducts water and mineral salts from the roots to the leaves. Similarly, it carries the food manufactured by the leaves to other parts of the plant. A green stem has chlorophyll and can carry out photosynthesis. It has nodes from which leaves or buds that can grow into branches or flowers Rise. The space between two nodes is called an internode. Stem modifications. Stems of certain plants are modified to perform special functions. Some of the modifications and their functions are for storage of water. Stems of plants such as cactus and jade swell up to store water in them. To manufacture food. Stems of some plants become flattened and leaf-like, like that of a cactus, and perform photosynthesis. For protection. Stems may be modified as thorns, such as in bougainvillea, or may be in the form of hard and sharp prickles, as in rows, to protect the plant from being eaten by animals. For support. Stems of climbers such as grapes and passion flowers are modified to form special structures called tendrils these help the climber plants which have weak stems attach themselves to others for support for storage of food potato onion and ginger are modified stems that store food there are three common kinds of underground stems Tubers. Example, potato. Rhizomes. Example, ginger. And bulbs. Example, onion. And garlic. For multiplication of the plant. Rhizomes. Bulbs. And tubers also help in the multiplication of plant. Plants such as rose. Jasmine and hibiscus grow into new plants through their stem cuttings. Leaves are known as food factories of the plant. They rise from the nodes of the stems and have characteristic shape and size. Let us study its different parts. A network of smaller branches of veins, called veinlets, forms a supporting framework and also serves to transport raw materials and manufactured food into and out of the lamina. Midrib, a continuation of the petiole, is the central vein of the leaf. Smaller veins grow from the midrib. The flat, green portion of the leaf is called leaf blade or lamina. Petiole is a narrow, stalk-like structure that connects the leaf to the stem. The arrangement of veins in a leaf is termed as venation. Venation is of two types, parallel and reticulate. If the veins run parallel to one another, from the base to the tip of the leaf, the leaf is said to have parallel venation. Example, banana and onion. 
If the veins are arranged in a net-like pattern on both sides of the midrib, the leaf is said to have reticulate venation, example, people and mango. Functions of a leaf A leaf performs various important functions for the plant. It is usually green, due to the presence of green pigment, called chlorophyll. A leaf prepares food for the plants. The process of making food by the plant, using carbon dioxide, water, chlorophyll, and light, is called photosynthesis. Plants store food in leaves, fruits, and stems in the form of starch. Plants breathe with the help of their leaves. Leaves of most plants have tiny openings, called the stomata, under their surface. The exchange of gases takes place through the stomata. Leaves also lose water through stomata. The loss of water through the stomata is called transpiration. Transpiration helps the plant in various ways. It helps in cooling the leaves, just as the loss of water during sweating helps in keeping our bodies cool. During transpiration, more water is pulled upwards from the roots to compensate for the lost water. This water brings along important nutrients from the roots, which are required by the leaf. Transpiration also plays an important role in water cycle. Leaf Modifications Leaves of some plants are modified to form special structures called tendrils. Tendrils help plants to attach themselves to support. Plants having tendrils are generally climbers. For protection, leaves of certain plants get modified to form spines. Spines also reduce the amount of water lost from the plant. Leaves of some plants store extra food, and are mostly eaten as vegetables. Spinach, cabbage, and lettuce are such leaves. Leaves of bryophyllum have buds that can grow into new plants. A flower is the reproductive organ of a plant. Stamens are the male reproductive parts of a flower. Each stamen has two parts. A thin stalk called filament and a knob-like structure called anther. The anther produces a powdery substance called pollen. Sepals are the green leaf-like structures at the base of the flowers. Sepals protect the flower during its development, and support the petals, when the flower blooms. Pistil, is the female reproductive part of the flower. It has three parts, a top portion called, stigma, an enlarged base, called, ovary, and, a tube-like structure, called, style, that connects ovary, and stigma. The ovary contains tiny ball-like structures called ovules, which later become seeds. Petals are colorful structures that surround the inner part of the flower. Pollination For a flower to develop into a fruit and form seeds, pollen grains must be transferred from its anthers to the stigma. The transfer of pollen grains from an anther to stigma is called pollination. Many flowers are brightly colored, and have a sweet smell, to attract insects, such as, bees. When the insect sits on the flower, the pollen grains stick to its body, and may get rubbed off, when it sits on another flower. This helps in pollination. After pollination, the ovules change into seeds. As seed form, the ovary develops into a fruit. Look at the structure of a bean seed. Under suitable conditions, that is, availability of sufficient water, air, and warmth, a seed becomes, a baby plant. In the outside part of the seed, the seed coat protects the embryo. Pore allows water to enter the seed. Inside the seed, the embryo contains a young root, and a shoot, which develop into a baby plant. 
cotyledons contain food for the baby plant.